On a seemingly ordinary morning in Sydney, Australia, the tranquility of an upscale apartment complex was shattered. At approximately 10 a.m. on July 30, 2011, an inexplicable noise, possibly screams, emanated from the 15th floor of a high-rise building, capturing the attention of passers-by below. What unfolded was a scene that would soon grip the nation and cross international borders, merging tragedy with mystery. At the heart of this enigma was Lisa Cecilia Harnam, a vibrant 30-year-old Canadian whose life came to a tragic halt as she plummeted from the balcony of her apartment, leaving behind a whirlwind of questions. The discovery of her body was soon followed by the emergence of a distraught man from the building, identified as Simon Giddeny, her fiancé, his demeanor a complex tapestry of shock and sorrow. The presence of a torn note in Lisa's pocket, cryptically hinting at surveillance, only deepened the aura of mystery surrounding the incident. As the news of Lisa's death unfurled, it revealed a narrative that seemed torn from the pages of a thriller, a love story that crossed continents, from the snowy landscapes of Canada to the sunny shores of Australia, culminating in a tale of romance, engagement, and an abrupt, tragic end. Yet beneath the surface of this seemingly tragic accident lay layers of complexity and doubt. Was Lisa's fall a harrowing mishap, a deliberate act, or something far more sinister? This narrative seeks to unravel the intricate tapestry of events, evidence, and emotions that surrounded Lisa Harnum's untimely death. Through a lens of journalistic integrity and objectivity, we will delve deep into the heart of a story that captivated two nations, exploring the intricate dance of evidence, the intense scrutiny of a trial, and the lingering shadows of unanswered questions. In doing so, we pay homage to the pursuit of truth, while never losing sight of the human tragedy at the core of this tale. Lisa Cecilia Harnum's story begins far from the sunny shores of Australia, in the bustling suburbs of Toronto, Canada. Born into a world of icy winters and brief summers, Lisa's passion for dance, particularly ballet, painted her early years with a palette of discipline and grace. By the age of 24, her thirst for adventure and broader horizons beckoned, leading her to the distant, warmer embrace of Australia. Arriving on a 12-month work visa, Lisa's charm and vivacity soon found her a position at the Australian Hair and Beauty College in Sydney, a city known for its vibrant culture and iconic landmarks. Her role at the salon was more than just a job. It was a canvas for her to express her love for fashion and beauty, elements that resonated deeply with her spirited personality. Despite the physical distance from her family in Canada, Lisa's bond with her loved ones, especially her mother Joan, remained unbreakable, bridged by regular conversations and messages that kept the familial ties strong. In 2009, a new chapter in Lisa's life began with an introduction to Simon Gittany, a man ten years her senior, whose life in the fast lane of Sydney's business world was marked by his role as a shoe importer. Their initial arrangement was one of convenience sharing an apartment with no foreseen complications, especially since Lisa believed Simon's interests lay elsewhere, possibly hinting at his sexuality. The apartment they shared, perched on the 15th floor of the Hyde, an exclusive high-rise offered more than just a place to live. It provided breathtaking views of Hyde Park and symbolized a certain status within Sydney's bustling inner city. What began as a practical living situation soon blossomed into a romantic engagement with Lisa finding herself entwined in a relationship that rapidly escalated from roommate to partner to fiancé. However, this swift progression from companionship to deep emotional investment carried with it the seeds of complexity. Lisa's initial communications with her mother hinted at a relationship that, while seemingly harmonious, lacked the depth of passionate love often associated with such whirlwind romances. This nuanced dynamic set the stage for a tale that would later unfold under the scrutiny of public and legal examination, hinting at undercurrents that belied the outward appearance of a fairy tale romance. The investigation into Lisa Cecilia Harnum's tragic fall commenced with urgency and meticulous attention to detail. Sydney's law enforcement, alongside forensic experts, embarked on a journey to piece together the events leading up to the moment Lisa's life was cut tragically short. The scene at the base of the upscale apartment building, where Lisa was found, was a tapestry of chaos and confusion, with witnesses and emergency responders converging in a desperate attempt to make sense of the incident. 
central to the investigation was the examination of physical evidence, both at the scene and within the apartment Lisa shared with Simon Gittany. One of the most haunting pieces of evidence was the note found in Lisa's pocket, torn and cryptic, hinting at a reality far more complex than initially perceived. The message about surveillance cameras inside and outside the house opened a Pandora's box of questions regarding privacy, control, and the true nature of Lisa and Simon's relationship. Forensic teams meticulously scoured the apartment, focusing on the balcony from which Lisa fell. A significant finding, or rather, the absence of one, was the lack of Lisa's fingerprints on the glass of the balcony, raising questions about her final moments. In contrast, Simon's fingerprints were present, adding another layer of complexity to the investigation. The presence of surveillance cameras in the apartment played a pivotal role in unraveling the sequence of events. Although Simon readily disclosed the operational aspects of the apartment's security system, a crucial hard drive, assumed to contain historical footage, was conspicuously missing by the time investigators became aware of its existence. This missing piece of evidence cast a shadow over the investigation, suggesting a possible attempt to conceal the events leading up to Lisa's fall. Despite the absence of the hard drive, the external surveillance cameras offered a glimpse into the moments immediately following the tragedy. These cameras captured Simon's visibly distraught exit from the apartment and his subsequent actions, which, while indicative of shock and grief, did little to shed light on the events preceding Lisa's fall. The most damning piece of evidence emerged from the surveillance footage capturing a brief but critical moment at the apartment's front door. The footage revealed Lisa's attempt to leave the apartment, only to be forcibly pulled back inside by Simon. This key piece of evidence, timed approximately 65 to 69 seconds before Lisa's fall, painted a harrowing picture of the couple's final moments together. Neighbors' testimonies added an auditory dimension to the investigation, with reports of hearing Lisa's desperate screams for help echoing through the building. The sudden cessation of these cries, followed by silence, painted a chilling auditory picture of the events unfolding within the apartment's walls. As the investigation delved deeper, the evidence began to sketch a narrative far removed from the initial assumption of a tragic accident. The torn note, the absence of Lisa's fingerprints on the balcony, the surveillance footage, and the neighbors' testimonies collectively pointed towards a complex web of emotions, actions, and possibly intentions. The investigation's path, fraught with twists and turns, was leading towards an unsettling conclusion, drawing the veil from a seemingly idyllic relationship to reveal a reality marked by control, fear, and ultimately, tragedy. The trial of Simon Gittany for the murder of Lisa Cecilia Haram unfolded with the eyes of Australia and the international community closely watching. The proceedings sought to dissect the events leading up to Lisa's tragic fall, scrutinizing every piece of evidence, every testimony, and the complex web of personal dynamics that defines Simon and Lisa's relationship. Central to the prosecution's case was the surveillance footage captured moments before Lisa's fall showing her being forcibly pulled back into the apartment by Simon. This crucial evidence contradicted Simon's narrative of the events and painted a grim picture of their final altercation. The torn note found in Lisa's pocket, cryptic yet telling, hinted at a level of surveillance and control that permeated their relationship, adding a sinister undertone to the proceedings. The absence of Lisa's fingerprints on the balcony railing, where she supposedly climbed over, raised significant questions about the circumstances of her fall. The prosecution posited that Simon, driven by rage and control, had lifted Lisa over the balcony, a theory supported by the witness testimony of Joshua Rathmill, who claimed to have seen Simon, unloading, what he initially thought was a black object, later realized to be Lisa, from the balcony. Simon's defense, however, painted a different picture, suggesting that Lisa's death was either a tragic accident or a deliberate act of self-harm, spurred by her alleged depressive state. They pointed to the physical improbability of Simon lifting Lisa over the balcony railing, given the height and his physical stature. The defense also highlighted the undisturbed state of the apartment's balcony area, including a treadmill and a potted plant, which they argued would have been displaced had there been a struggle. The emotional testimony of neighbors who reported hearing Lisa's desperate pleas for help added a haunting backdrop to the trial, emphasizing the terror of her final moments. 
Yet, the defense challenged the reliability of these accounts, suggesting that the intensity of the moment could have clouded witnesses' perceptions. As the trial progressed, the complex portrait of Simon and Lisa's relationship emerged, characterized by Simon's controlling behavior and Lisa's growing sense of entrapment. Text messages and recordings presented by the prosecution depicted a relationship marred by manipulation and fear, contrasting sharply with the defense's portrayal of a loving, if tumultuous, partnership. The trial, a meticulous examination of evidence and human psychology, ventured beyond the immediate facts of the case to explore the darker aspects of love, control, and freedom. As both sides presented their narratives, the courtroom became a battleground for two competing truths, with justice for Lisa hanging in the balance. The conclusion of this trial would not only determine Simon's fate, but also serve as a poignant reflection on the complexities of human relationships and the sometimes imperceptible line between love and control. The culmination of the trial brought a tense courtroom to a standstill as Justice Lucy McCallum prepared to deliver her verdict. After weeks of testimonies, forensic analyses, and legal arguments, the fate of Simon Giddeney hung in the balance. The weight of evidence, the surveillance footage, the desperate screams heard by neighbors, the controlling dynamics of Simon and Lisa's relationship, and the haunting note found in Lisa's pocket, coalesced into a narrative that swayed the scales of justice. Justice McCallum found Simon Giddeney guilty of the murder of Lisa Cecilia Harnam, rejecting the defense's portrayal of Lisa's death as a tragic accident or a deliberate act of self-harm. The judge cited the compelling evidence of Simon's controlling behavior and the surveillance footage as critical factors in her decision. The footage, showing Simon forcibly pulling Lisa back into the apartment moments before her death, contradicted his claims and highlighted the volatile nature of their relationship. The courtroom, charged with emotion, erupted into a cacophony of reactions as the verdict was read. Rachel Louise, Simon's new partner who bore a striking resemblance to Lisa and had been a staunch supporter throughout the trial, vocally expressed her disbelief and distress, embodying the divisive public opinion surrounding the case. In the aftermath of the verdict, the impact of Lisa Harnam's tragic death resonated far beyond the courtroom. The case had laid bare the insidious nature of domestic violence and control sparking conversations about the warning signs of abusive relationships and the importance of intervention and support for victims. The establishment of the Lisa Harnam Foundation marked a poignant legacy, transforming the tragedy of her death into a beacon of hope and support for those facing similar circumstances. The Foundation's work in providing services and raising awareness about domestic and family violence aimed to prevent future tragedies and honor Lisa's memory. Simon Giddeney's sentencing to a minimum of 18 years in prison was a conclusion to a legal battle but marked the beginning of a broader societal reflection on the nature of love, control, and the shadows that can lurk behind closed doors. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you found it insightful or thought-provoking, please consider showing your support by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and sharing your thoughts in the comments below.